Welcome to the underground, the Steel City Underground, the black and gold standard for Pittsburgh Steelers coverage. Now, here's your host, Joe Kuzma. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Steel City Underground podcast. My name is Joe Kuzma, and I am joined by no one today, just all by myself, me by my lonesome, flying so low on this very program, and that's because I did some partying this weekend, partying in Canton, Ohio, some partying in Pittsburgh, got to hang out at the Hall of Fame and see three great induction speeches, five Steelers going in in total over the weekend. Uh, you had Alan Fanica and the late, great Bill Nunn, well, well, long overdue. Bill Cower was the main event, but man, the cherry on top. Wasn't it cool finally seeing Donnie Shell get in after 30 years? He waited almost as long as Calvin Johnson is old. Calvin Johnson, 35, makes me feel old. But Donnie Shell. Long overdue, long, long overdue. Troy Polamalu, first ballot Hall of Famer, as he most certainly deserved to be. And it was great finally seeing and hearing from Troy. And if he had any animosity about the Steelers organization, he held that close to the vest and was a, a total pro and said some things that I think were truly from his heart. Maybe he didn't finish. He, he You know, he probably wanted to continue playing. We haven't seen Troy in so long, but getting to see him out there, hearing those words, just an incredible, incredible speech. Lots of incredible speeches throughout the entire weekend. And if you've never had a chance to actually go out to Canton, check out the Hall of Fame, really great. But if you get to go there on a Hall of Fame weekend, one of the induction ceremonies, they're all, all great. If you're a fan of football, you can't help but love it. And there was just so many great stories. Jimmy Johnson, Edron James, uh uh, John uh, Lynch. I mean, they were just Steve Atwater, quite a few Broncos too, or at least guys who had, um, you know, some of their career played in Denver, just uh, all, all over the place. Some Cowboys too, of course, Drew Pearson, Jimmy, I mentioned Jimmy Johnson, Jimmy Johnson, great speech as well. Just if you're a football fan, but particularly if you were a Steelers fan, you happen to be there. It was like an invasion. It was like going back to Jerome Bettis, I think what, 2015, Maybe, yeah, 2015, I think. I looked this up and already forgot. But, you know, like five, six years ago. Is that good enough? And the place was completely different. It was like a relic back then. The Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. It's now this uh, Hall of Fame village. It's it's very modern. Uh, and they're still adding on. They're still doing construction, building things all around it. I mean, it's just, wow, is it impressive. So if you've never been there, the main difference is, you know, I don't get this like kink in my neck from looking down the one far end zone. And that's the way it was set up when Bettis was there. And I think they actually crammed more people there back then because you had like the whole field taken up. And Steelers Nation Radio actually addressed this already. For, so for those of you who already heard this, it kind of were stealing my thunder. I was driving home and trying to get uh, get one of these shows up and they're talking about things. I'm like, man, you're talking about all this. I don't want to hear this because now it's going to influence what I'm saying. So I'll give them some props for that too. They made the same exact observation as I did because now you get the amphitheater. It sits, if you could visualize this or if you're watching me on YouTube. So let me try and get my hands here in the frame. So these are the sidelines, right? The end zones are here. You got the rectangle, right? So the amphitheater is now on the sidelines and everybody's facing the one direction. It kind of makes for a better presentation, but Again, it felt, I don't know. It felt a little hollow. I think a little part of that, and I don't mean there weren't enough terrible towels and things like that. It just seemed like I, I I feel like Bettis was like a sellout. You know what I mean? Like many more people. Maybe it's the current climate we're in. I know for a fact Brian couldn't join me for this particular trip. I had these tickets since February 2020, <laughs> so it got postponed quite a bit. Finally, great to get there. Uh, get to see some of this in person, get to see the whole new setup in Canton. Can't wait to go back. Maybe we'll get some uh, other Steelers in there soon. Definitely Ben Roethlisberger, maybe Heinz Ward. There's always some debates. This is for another show, but after I looked up some numbers and some of the things, if it's off-field stuff, you know, saying he wouldn't take a leak on Roger Goodell if he was on fire or something of that nature. James Harrison, <laughs> maybe that might not bode well for him, even though I don't think Goodell has any say in the Pro Football Hall of Fame and what David Baker and his fine crew do over there in Canton. But uh, Casey Hampton, another – man, Casey Hampton, just so underrated as a nose tackle, really. I mean, 
just amazing. And these were some of the things that were, you know, discussed elsewhere. So I'm not going to take up too much of your time with that. But if you didn't have a chance, you have like NFL Network or just go. I think a lot of this is on YouTube. A lot of it's been posted on the Steelers website. Check out the speeches. Every single person, Alan Fanica, Bill Cower, Troy Polamalu, Donnie Shell, they were all great induction speeches. Can't say enough. They don't, they don't have enough. They can't say enough good things about the Pittsburgh Steelers organization, how it's run, and what it means to be a Steeler. And that should really give everyone who's a fan of this team and organization just a whole a whole lot of sense of pride. Not the not to only mention, like I said, they're saying a lot of these a lot of people are saying the same things about Jim or saying the Colts, um, the Denver Broncos organization, and the, you know, you got the the Bowen family and and a lot of others that are involved. In this whole process, you'll you'll hear all of these things. So I, I highly recommend checking it out. They they kept everyone down to eight minutes. Peyton Manning's speech, of course, alluded to Ray Lewis going off for about three hours, <laughs> you know, a few years ago. So uh, the Hall of Fame induction ceremony, absolutely great. A few other bucket list items here before I get to some of my own personal observation from uh, training camp at Heinz Field over the weekend. One of the uh, the big ones was the T.J. Watt contract thing, and then we all knew T.J. Watt was in contract negotiations. He's talking about contract. People are like, "Oh, where's all the money? The money is the money's like forward right now. They're not going to be paying it on this year's cap, but they're going to extend him. He's on a fifth year option." They're going to extend them in this last year. They usually do these things during training camps. This isn't so surprising, but people were saying, well, TJ Watt's not showing up at practice. No, that's patently false. He's been at practice. I saw it with my own two eyes. You could see it anytime you tune in to Steelers.com, see him warming up. He's not participating in uh, in contact drills, and he has been dinged a few times in training camp over the years, and I think is a potential two-time defensive player of the year and a guy who's about to get paid handsomely. You don't want... He could he could very well in the net before September here be the highest paid defender in the NFL. Okay, keep that in mind. Do you want this guy going out there and like busting an ankle or something and not being able to participate for four to six weeks, which may go four to six weeks into this now seventeen game season? I don't I don't think so. I mean, it's it's good you got the insurance policy. I think that's part of why Melvin Ingram's here as well in a one year deal. They kind of sensed this was going. And just so you know, I have this new pen. I'm going to be clicking it. Hopefully it's not like annoying, but it was so bright and sunny over there in Heinz Field. If you've never been in the day, and this, this like looms into October like this, you're sitting on the one side of the field where they have the fans because there's the Great Hall. And uh, my seats used to be over there as well. And it just radiates off the gold seats. So you can't even see your cell phone. So I got like, you can't really see it. You know, should you? Because it's like all chicken scratch. But I got like a a couple pages of handwritten notes here from training camp because I didn't want to forget. This is kind of exclusive. I didn't write this for the website over at SteelCityUnderground.com just because I was kind of lazy to translate it into the written format. So anyways, yeah, I'm playing with the pen here. And TJ Y is doing his own thing. He's doing some of the light warm-ups. He's not doing any of the contact drills. He's doing some stuff on the side on his own. And it, it reminded me of somebody. Actually, another outside linebacker, another great. He may actually hold... Jeez, I don't know. Do I have this in my notes? Oh, the sack record in the NFL, and that's James Harrison. James Harrison would just march to the tune of his own uh, band, a whole band. He gets the whole band, not just a drum, not just a fiddle. And Harrison's over there, and he's in sweats. He's not even like in the official like complete Nike getup. He has like a hoodie and sweats, and it's like, what are you doing, man? Especially like the one time they moved this over to a turf field from uh, St. Vincent's because of weather. And he's out there at one of the local area high schools uh, in Latrobe. Uh, Not the one where there was Friday Night Lights. I'm trying to think what the other name of the school was out there. It escapes me. It's not that important to the story. The point was, it's field turf. If you've never been on field turf, with either yourself as an athlete or with other athletes, you coach kids or or you take them to practice or something, take a walk out on that stuff just one time. Take a good Bring your shoes, take them off, feel the heat that comes off of that sucker. The the thing's made with like chewed up rubber tires to some degree. It's recycled, right? It's rubber. It attracts so much heat. Oh my God. I just, and I'm not trying to get sidetracked here, but I'm just like trying to illustrate like these guys that wear like, I don't know, man. It's not like cold in Pittsburgh. Get if you're like some, maybe some Florida or California guys, Texas boys, you know, uh, maybe, maybe it is maybe the 80 some degrees, but no, man, it's, it's warm enough. The, the lady, the young lady that was sitting in front of me, a looker too, by the way, um, 
had her hair. She she was trying to just keep pulling it up because it keeps she had some long hair going down her back. And it looked like she was ready to get up and leave. And man, well, she was decked out with all the Steelers stuff. And I'm like, this chick, and I mean that in a completely, completely complimentary way. She's here to watch some football. She wasn't like, I, I mean, I, I'm surprised she doesn't have, she didn't have handwritten notes. So um, if you hear this, get in touch with me, by the way. But anyways, <laughs> no, I was like, are you leaving early or something? She just like got up, had to get like something like a hair tie or something from the gift shop. But anyways, um, I got to speak about that too. A couple other things, not just TJ Watt. So TJ Watt, he'll get paid. Won't be a problem. They're keeping him healthy. Ignore all the other speculation, clickbait junk that's out there. Kevin Dotson, that's another one. Everyone likes to latch on to words and try and pump out as much crap on the internet as they can. Tweets, website, blogs, and everything else as much as possible. Podcast, get it out there as fast as you humanly can to get those clicks, baby. It's sensational. I, I saw, I, I wish I could remember the headline I saw. It was just totally trash the people I'm talking about, so it's probably better that I protect the guilty here. But it was like something like Mike Tomlin says uh, one player hasn't earned a starting role. Or something like that. It was like so vague that you had to click on it. It was kind of like NFL.com last week. They said, uh, for, uh, former Steelers running back rejoins the team after being with Atlanta in 2019. And he had like Tony Brooks James, by the way, who was on the roster for maybe three games. I think he got in one. He's always been the guy who I've kind of picked on and made fun of for having a cup of coffee with the Pittsburgh Steelers and that 2019 team where like over 40 offensive players took at least one snap. Even Tyson Alou played fullback. 2019 was just such a disaster for the Steelers and in injuries and in offense. But Tony Brooks James, that's who it was. And Tony Brooks James didn't last uh, the whole season with the Atlanta Falcons either. He was in a very temporary capacity there. I do think he did get in one game very similar to Pittsburgh. I need a breather. Mm. Sorry about that. That's what happens when you're by yourself and you can't segue. I should cut in the middle, but I'm lazy to edit sometimes. And I'm waving the pen. The pen drives you crazy. Let me know. If you like it, I'll continue doing it. It's very good. It's almost like a sobriety test for some of the ends that, you know, are watching this in the evening and getting some icy lights pounded. So Kevin Dotson, Mike Tomlin comes out and says, come on, I got Mike Tomlin's words here because Joe Rudder, friend of ours from the Tribune Review, uh, well, first it was asked by Jim Colony from 93.7 The Fan. He has, says, how's Kevin Dotson doing? Uh, how's Kevin Dotson now he's back with the second team? Kevin Dotson practiced for the first time in a while on Sunday. He's been hurt, right? Uh, and Mike Tomlin says, I can't tell you. I'll look at the tape first. It was good to have him back out there today. Very true. Mike Tomlin was actually looking at the tackles, which I think is going to be a three-way race with these players. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, Joe Rudder follows up with, did he go with the twos because you like what Rashad Coward's done with the ones? And he has done nothing to earn first team reps. That'd be Kevin Dotson. What are we talking about? He's a second year guy that hadn't worked. And everybody took that as, man, did he just trash Kevin Dotson? Uh, and no, he didn't trash Kevin Dotson. He's telling the truth. The guy's been hurt and he hasn't been able to play. So he's easing him back into the lineup and he hasn't quite... Uh, Maybe earned a spot. Uh, it, he didn't even, you know, he hasn't done anything to earn first team reps. What, what's patently false about that? There's nothing. But BJ Finney's been out there too, as well, getting uh, uh, some of those reps. And we've been seeing Kendrick Green almost exclusively as the center, uh, getting a ton of those, even though the depth chart says some different things. The depth chart, I'm going to go down at some point during this program because uh, it was just updated. Most recently, as of August 9th, we've got a new depth chart, and there's a couple of moving pieces, but J.C. Hassenauer being one of them is still listed as the starting center. Do a little head scratching here. B.J. Finney's listed as the third string, so I'm not sure exactly where we're going with that. There could be a possibility, I think, that maybe B.J. Finney ends up as uh, the starting. He's played left guard in place of Ramon Foster. That's where they have him listed on the depth chart, even though Rashad Coward has been taking some of those reps. Rashad Coward listed as the right guard. And we've seen Joe Haig play quite a bit, number 71 as well, playing as a right tackle position. And Dan Moore at the left tackle. Man, that's going to be some interesting stuff. But before I dive into the handwritten notes, I love this little pad too. It was fairly inexpensive. Got a magnet on it. Love it. I'm shilling for the Steelers. They gave me a schedule. They, they stuff your bag with schedule magnets. They get stuck with so many of them that are printed. They'll be giving them out at the game at some point, too, if you didn't get one and you head out there. So uh, I may have broke some news. And I wasn't even trying to break news, but some other website covered a tweet I sent out on Sunday. I was over by, if you've ever been 
the Heinz Field. You come in, Gate B. That's the FedEx Great Hall. And that has like the Steelers kind of the Walk of Fame thing. And now has the brand new big, I should say big ass pro shop. Holy crap, is that place awesome. Uh, that's where I found this hat. And this is what this is about to lead to because I think this hat kind of tips off some things. And this is all speculative. This is all things I'm guessing we could get to December and January and I could be 100% completely wrong. So take this as it is. This is a guess. But Nike and New Era and the people with the NFL licenses have been known to do these things. Middle of the season, they unveil maybe some new hats. This year, New Era, I don't think they did this last year. I know they've had sideline caps forever. And then they started doing like middle of the season, a whole new set. So after like week eight or week nine, all of a sudden, everybody's it's new hats. And they're like, oh man, I got to... Take my money, you know what I mean? They have home and away hats right now, and this happens to be the away one. I, I need to get some sponsor money. Come on, New Era, if you're listening, send me the other hat. <laughs> you know, get you some free advertising here. But I, I love these, by the way. New Era, there's nothing better than a New Era cap. I don't care what you say. So always been a fan. Starter caps back in the day, for those of you who are old enough to remember that. The logo on the back, wear them backwards. Yeah, I kind of grew out of that, I think. I think. I don't know. Uh, we'll see how it looks. Got the cool NFL logo on the back. But I was over by the terrible towel wall when you first walk in, and I saw something that said it, it, they had some empty cases. They have shadow boxes, and they're displaying all the terrible towels that have ever been produced over the years. A couple of them behind me, like uh, maybe the original Myron Cope. This thing I treasure. I cried in this thing, Super Bowl Thirty, because he who shall not be named just screwed that game up and made Larry Brown a valuable free agent. So... Here we've got the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and they make so many of these. I couldn't even get – they're sold out, of course. Bill Cower, Troy Polamalu. Hopefully I'll get one like I did Bettis. Training camp towels. And then they have a space there, and it says 2021 for this year, and it says reverse color rush. And, you know, I got to the uh, the big brain here, started operating the wheels. They started grinding a little bit, and then they got greased. And I'm like, wait a minute, reverse color rush. And it just so happened, I went into the Steelers store just after that to pick up this hat. And this hat doesn't have like a specific name, but the, the name for New Era, New Era does have some reverse color rush product that they put out before. Are the Steelers just going to put out a towel? They've already had a black towel with gold, uh, the gold terrible towel lettering. So it's completely reverse colors from the ones that I have on display here for those of you who could see it. Uh, I'm thinking revert, but the, the term is color rush. It's kind of like a Nike almost kind of thing or an NFL type of thing. You know what I mean? And it, it originally started with just the Thursday night games. They were all divisional games. The teams are playing against each other. And I speculated many years ago on what the Steelers were going to do for a color rush jersey. And originally they weren't like jumping on board this trend. And then they unveiled, I don't know, was it like October, November, the one year they were going to play the Ravens. Um, I'm trying to think the very first game they ended up wearing them for. I, I can tell you they play most of the time when they play the Ravens, they wear them, uh, maybe because of success. But they, they had throwbacks at that point. And anyways, it's leading me to speculate that the Steelers may have a new jersey this year. I do believe that they've been wearing the color rush that they've had for four or five years now, and that's when they tend to start phasing these things out and coming out with something new. The jersey they didn't wear last year, was the throwback jersey with the old block style numbering instead of you know the the new kind of modern uh, number font that's on it? I think it's Futura or whatever it is, and uh, the angled numbers. No, the old block style. You know, think Rod Woodson. Think of the the Bettis throwback they sell for some reason because he only wore that for like one year and then they changed it to the new numbers uh, uh, and the new style of jersey. And think of that Super Bowl 30, you know, think of uh, the old 70s steel curtain. Actually, think of that a little further back. That's kind of my, my speculation is what they might wear. All white with black would be pretty solid. Some people are thinking this inverted jersey that came out a few years ago that they've been selling with like the gold looks like my shirt, but with the black numbers. Oh, I really don't want to see that. I don't like the Seahawks look with like that Seahawk green. It just like looks like it's going to jump off my TV or break the color calibration on my uh, HD set. So... Uh, somebody in the store, they're talking, and they're looking for a Najee Harris jersey, but in color rush. And the exact words were from the employee that they weren't expecting to get any. And now it's not necessarily unheard of with a rookie that they only have maybe one one product in. They haven't printed enough yet. I didn't see away jerseys. They don't have the away jerseys online either, the white, right? 
But they do have the block numbers, which they didn't wear last year, those throwbacks. They didn't wear them last year. Uh, they do have the home jerseys for, for Harris, but they don't have the color rush. And when he said they weren't expecting the color rush to be in, like I said, the wheels started turning. I will go online. They don't sell a color rush for Najee Harris. So be on the lookout. There might be something. And the fact the NFL is doing this style of hat on my head right now, for those of you who are on the audio-only version, uh, the Steelers logo, it's a black hat. The Steelers logo is black with like a gold kind of shadow outline. It's kind of three-dimensional. Uh, so it's kind of almost monochrome. Could even be black on black. But I have a feeling that the teams and Nike, I think they're cooking up something to make a few more bucks. So be on the lookout for that. If I broke that story, awesome. If I didn't, well, it's interesting to think about, isn't it? It's <laughs> interesting to fantasize about. Now on to the meat and the potatoes of the show. I'm going to have to grab some H2O. Ah, I got to stay hydrated. That's what these guys are doing. I can't believe I'm reading this right now. I can't believe I wrote this on my notepad. You could see the very first thing. Ben. Big Ben. Everybody said Ben looks like he's in shape. I'm like, are you kidding me? This guy, you're always ragging on him, saying he's fat, saying he's out of shape, this, that, and the other thing. Dear Lord, he looks like a Greek god. Uh, like... Uh, it takes a lot for me. I've always said he's kept himself in much better shape than what people have given him credit for. He's a bigger guy. I understand what that's like. I have a metabolism that still burns a lot of things, but I still carry a little extra more than I would like. And he's in the same age bracket as me right now. I'm going to be 40 later this year, okay? Ben Roethlisberger is so ridiculously lean right now. He almost looks unhealthy. I tried it. I'm, I'm not joking. I, the people who reported this, I, I just thought some of them don't see the guy often enough or they hear all the tall tales of, yeah, the yeah, guy eats cheeseburgers and guzzles beers. I, I don't know that anybody's ever actually said that, but that's kind of the impression you get that Ben is lazy or something. He looks great, man. He looks better than like uh, he, Tom Brady. You know, Tom Brady looks very like the guy. It looks like he doesn't eat anything. And this is the way Ben Roethlisberger looks now. It looks like he's just drinking water and, I don't know, maybe some salt cubes or something. I don't know. That takes the rest of the water out, and he's getting prepared for a, a bodybuilding competition or something. He is so lean. It's going to be good for him for the season. The The leaner he is, it doesn't mean like he's necessarily lost any muscle or anything like that. Whoever's been his sports trainers have obviously made a concerned effort for him to be able to – recover quickly he doesn't have any unnecessary body weight all the way around and that's like muscle or whatever they, everything with him looks like it's functional I, I think he's going to have a tremendous year this year just based on that uh, I think he's looked great I thought he looked great in camp I, the, we didn't get to see him in a preseason game I don't know that we will uh, ben is Ben. Ben, I don't know that necessarily was taking all of the big snaps. He was working on the side some with Kendrick Green. They were doing very, very well uh, with a lot of the snaps, looked on point, everything like that. So I don't really have any concerns. I'm going to talk a lot about the line. I may have, I may be jumping around because if you haven't been there, you got defense on one side. Tight ends were real close to where I was sitting on the sideline. Running backs will split off sometimes. Wide receivers, there's punting drills. Oh, is there punting drills? There's some great stuff to talk about. They work on special teams. You've got the seven shots where you have everybody lined up against everyone, but there may be some mix and match between first and second team, second and third. Uh, Mason Rudolph and Dwayne Haskins. I, I felt like Haskins may have gotten even more snaps than Rudolph the uh, the other day. Uh, but overwhelmingly, those two were getting whatever Ben wasn't, and there was a few scraps left on the table for Josh Dobbs. If you've heard post-game uh, interviews with Dobbs, it was saying making the most of his opportunity because you would see him get maybe one or two reps, and boom, he's out. Well, you know, Mason and Haskins are getting five, six, eight, ten, depending on the situation that's going on there. But Ben, yeah, he looks great. I don't think he has to overdo it. Another guy that fits th – there's a couple of guys here that really fit the bill as far as – being impressive to finally see some of it in person, Pat Fryermuth. He was out there, as was Eric Ebron. They were practicing again. I was watching the tight ends. You know, one of the guys I really stand for here is Kevin Rader from my alma mater of Youngstown State. He's basically just been an undrafted guy, kind of like a walk-on NFL journeyman practice squad type. And I, I'm really I'm pulling for him. Him and Zach Gentry look like clones. Now, Zach Gentry stepped up his game 
there's like four tight ends that really look good for all of this. It's going to really come down to is Gentry play special teams better than Raider or vice versa? Is Raider the better blocker or vice versa? Raider's catching a lot of passes coming his way. Gentry's starting to, you know, look like look like a guy you've been developing for the last couple of years. They said he was raw. It looks like he's finally maybe arrived to that point. Does that mean he's going to be tight end one or tight end two? I'm not going to go as far as to say that, but as far as depth, uh, you know, a spot starter or something like that, I don't think I'd be offended with either one of these guys. But then you see Fryermuth go out there, and you see Ebron go out there, and you see the footwork. And, man, Fryermuth, he could dance right there with Ebron. And his catch radius is just on freaking believable. I may even have a note here about Ebron and a play that he made over Terrell Edmonds. A lot of people are going to go, yuck, yuck, yeah, joke, joke. Terrell Edmonds was, like, all over him. Not in, like, a penalized, throw-the-flag type, blow-the-whistle, uh, pass-interference type way. It, it was just Ben put a ball where only Eric Ebron could get it, and Eric Ebron hauled that sucker in, and I'm just – Maybe it's a sign of better things to come because we all know the Steelers had some problems with drops. I have a note here, too, about uh, Deontay Johnson putting in a lot of work catching the football off and on, on the sidelines, between drills, maybe when he should be taking some rest over there, out there early. It's, it's something that he he looks laser-focused on doing. And, man, you, uh, what are we looking at? Year three with Deontay right now? Year, uh, yeah, year three, because uh, James Washington, oh, geez, James Washington thing's been debunked too, okay? Just Mike Tomlin said he hasn't asked for it. Nobody else besides Adam Schefter reported it. I get it. Adam Schefter, respected reporter, not saying that whoever gave him the information didn't give him the information. Maybe it was bad information. Schefter acted on it. That's what happens sometimes. But not hearing some of the other folks speak about it. I just haven't given any credence to it. Mike Tomlin slapped that out of the sky just on Saturday night. Uh, I saw that during the Hall of Fame thing, and I was like, oh, well, apparently that's not a thing anymore. But Deontay Johnson, uh, yeah, entering three year three, looks like the real deal out there. Uh, just a very shifty, hard to hard to tackle, quicker than a hiccup. I like some of the other wide receivers that are part of this uh, group here as well. Uh, let me see. Some of my notes here, excuse me, I apologize. I could never know if some of this comes through. By the way, an apology to everybody who's been listening to the show. I meant to mention this at the very top. Don't mean to get sidetracked. Audio issues the last couple of times, racing to go on vacation, uh, come back from vacation, forgot about the setting that I skipped the first time through and completely uh, didn't uh, record with Brian muted. Uh, just his track got deleted during the process. His audio track never got synced up with the re- with mine. So it just looked like I cut Brian out completely. So uh, thank you, fine folks, for pointing that out. I'm pointing it out quickly. You know, I, I feel so incredibly stupid when that happens. It's my responsibility getting the show out to all of you. And it's just, it, it you know, stuff happens. And it happened more than once. So thanks for sticking here with us and putting up with some of the technical difficulties. Hopefully it does not happen again in the future. But I can't promise anything because you know what? I'm just short-minded sometimes. That's why I got handwritten notes. So, Pat Fryermuth. Dan, oh, man, Dan Moore. Dan Moore can be a starter. I think Dan Moore has got a shot this year. He just looks like he continues to improve even throughout practice. Uh, Fourth-round pick. This might be a home run. Uh, I really hate to eat these words. I think there's some other people who have the very same consensus. I was thinking to myself, really? Uh, Mike Tomlin came over, and he was given a look with Adrian Clem. At the three of them, that would be Zach Banner, Dan Moore, Chooks Korofor, watching him go through a few drills. Banner's still nursing himself back from injury. Uh, I think Dan Moore, uh, they got to look over their shoulder. We'll put it that way. Dan Moore is going to be a valuable, even if he's just a swing tackle this year, I think he's going to get some meaningful uh, playing time. So I need to put that out there. Joe, uh, Joe Haig. He's uh, listed here, what I say, right tackle behind uh, Zach Banner. So he's listed with the with the twos. And there's not a whole lot of depth along the line. They'll keep eight or nine of these guys. Uh, Joe Haig's going to make this team. Uh, I, think, I think he's versatile enough. I think I saw enough uh, from practice and from the preseason game the other day. Uh, I already mentioned Deontay Johnson. I mentioned uh, the uh, two-horse race for tight end three between Kevin Rader and Zach Gentry. Uh, I really want to give the guy I'm biased for Kevin Rader, the edge here, but we all know there's a fifth round pick invested in the other gentleman. So we shall see how this ends up going. And of course, somebody's got to stay healthy or else the other guy's going to end up winning the spot. Uh, I, I thought Ben in, in the seven shots, he was very cerebral and picking apart the defense in different parts. And a lot of the first team defense of uh, Chase Claypool and Juju Smith-Schuster 
they had uh, both toe tap touchdowns. Uh, ben caught Claypool in the back of the end zone. Nice stretching out, feet inbounds, tapping them, staying inbounds by Claypool. Uh, Juju was on the front corner of the end zone by the pylon. He gets in there too. Ben puts the ball, of course, for both of these guys, only where they can get them. Um, on the one, the one was like right in the middle, right in the front end zone. It was just like one of these things where Juju kind of sneaks out maybe from, I forget if he might have been in motion, sneaks in behind one of the tight ends, just a little curl, and boom. And Minka Fitzpatrick read this thing like it was a book he knows every word to. He knew the script, and it was fingertip, like just missed just missed and you could see him he's pulling down chin straps he's upset with himself for not making the big play could have been a pick probably a pick six in a real game juju of course they're, they're trash talking ben is trash talking with them too uh yeah that's some good stuff man a lesser quarterback look out uh mika's looking sharp and let me see who else I got here. Oh, geez. Yeah, I was talking about John LeGlue was taking some snaps. Not necessarily uh, the, the best decision-making there. Um, Cassius Marsh isn't looking too bad against the twos either. He's getting he, he's getting some penetration. It looks like he's got some moves. It looks like he's in very good shape. I would be remiss to mention Alex Highsmith, one of the guys I've been so high on on this program all summer. Melvin Ingram, I can't get used to him wearing eight. Those two got on the field at the same time. It's probably somewhere in here where they, they had to play. They, they had to play. Both of them get in there. And, in fact, there's uh, somewhere along the line where Tyson Alou comes in. And uh, these aren't contact drills. These aren't with pads, so keep this in mind. But the pressure put on the edges by both Ingram and Highsmith. By the way, they're moving Ingram around everywhere. Uh, Ingram's playing, playing on both sides. Uh, they're stacking them in some cases on this overloading one side, which isn't unusual. You know, we've seen this with Highsmith and TJ too, but this is, um, this is just something I wanted to point out. And Highsmith, I, I just saw him do like the, the spin move thing again and just totally beat, uh, I forget who he was up against. Maybe, maybe one of the guys like Joe Haig or something out on the edge. Uh, Dan Moore potentially too has been, uh, uh, kind of the guy, it's uh, almost like a little bit, I don't want to say punching bag because it's the iron sharpening iron type of situation here, the competition making each other better. We heard this during the Hall of Fame speeches, right? A lot of these guys in the Hall of Fame played against another Hall of Famer. It just made their game that much better. Uh, but Cassius Marsh, a, a guy that I called a revolving door from that wild card game in Cleveland last year, or in Pittsburgh, but against Cleveland. And... Um, he's a guy that's going to make the team. I, I I feel pretty confident in that. I didn't see I didn't see anything out of place. Uh, I don't know that I necessarily want him to be the starter. I feel more comfortable with Ingram having been signed. I think Ingram looks very fresh and uh, Ingram, Ingram looks self motivated out there. I, I really like the way Ingram looks. Oh, let's see what else we got here. Haskins, uh, yeah, he got the bad snap from LeGlue. That's what I was looking for there. He has a little bit of staring down uh, some of the intended targets. I don't know if he's if he's being told to maybe – this is one of the things we talked about on the other, sh- other shows in the preseason. Maybe, hey, we need to see this guy get some reps, one of the wide receivers, throw some passes his way. Uh, it looks like he's staring down guys a little bit too. I would love to say maybe the same thing about Mason Rudolph. None of these guys really popped off the page for me while I was there. Same thing as the preseason game. They all seem to be equal billing. They all seem to have like their strengths and weaknesses, right? I didn't see necessarily the same type of accuracy with Haskins, but there is some good stuff from Haskins later too. Good and bad with Rudolph. Uh, it started pouring down rain at one point during this, and I think I missed uh, maybe one of the drills. There was like a two-minute drill uh, that could have been Mason Rudolph's uh, turn at doing it. I'm trying to watch it on a screen. It gets some replays. It gets in the way of trying to track numbers and see some other things here. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, just just keep in mind that my word isn't the gospel. Uh, what I said, maybe somebody else could have seen it a little differently too. Maybe somebody smarter than me. That's not possible. And by the way, uh, staring down targets a little bit from Haskins, overthrew a target. That that it happens. I, I'm not even upset about that. Uh, Mason, I got Mason here too. Holding, uh, holding uh, down long and uh, a couple of checkdowns as well. They've been calling Haskins check down, and I was kind of getting used to seeing that, but I was seeing Rudolph do some of it. I just wonder if some of it's busted plays with some of the backup wide receivers who I'm going to get to talk about here too. Um, Anthony McFarland is 
fast. I say faster than a hiccup with some of this stuff. And I mean, Najee Harris looks like a, a, a star in the making. There, there's no doubt about it. He brings something different to the table. But you're going to put both of these guys on the field, and that's going to cause some more problems for opposing defenses. I think the Steelers have uh, just a bevy of riches here. They got at least four deep, maybe five deep with Ray Ray McLeod with the wide receiver group. They may even go six deep. I start talking about some of these uh, gentlemen, some of these young men that may have a shot even at the practice squad. If we have the expanded practice squad, by the way, I do think there's some value with Josh Dobbs. Do I have Josh Dobbs in my notes anywhere? Yeah, I do. I'll get to Josh Dobbs later. I do think there might be a spot for him because I do think it brings value to the team. His value to the team might be better as a, a leader, as more the brains. We know he's a very smart guy, film room, things of that nature. I think he's valuable to bring it, to have around, especially in camp with some of the younger uh, players trying to fight for a roster spot as well. Do I think Dobbs has necessarily had the best showings? He hasn't had enough to where I think he's in competition for one of the other two spots. The team has already committed themselves to Mason Rudolph for next year. I would be surprised after camp if they don't get a commitment. And they kind of have some contractual rights with the way futures reserve contracts. I'm going to look up. I'm going to see what Dwayne Haskins signed here because it's going to drive me crazy. You know I don't like to give any of you false information here. Haskins... uh, Signed to a few reserve futures contract. So if you remember the way this works with some of the other players, Alejandro Villanueva probably the more the one that most recently comes to mind. Kind of have him locked up for about three or four years here. Uh, Robert Spillane almost the same way. So he's going to be at some point an exclusive rights free agent. He's going to be a restricted free agent. So that means if anybody tries to make any moves or offer contracts before the Steelers, the Steelers could obviously extend them before then. But if they make any moves on him. Uh, they kind of have him. They, they kind of have like the ability to keep him in the fold, so to speak. And we still don't know what's going to go on with Ben. Ben could still be playing a year or two be, uh, after this, too. We're going to see if Rudolph continues to develop. I don't see Rudolph going anywhere, no matter what some of the fuss is online. I think some people have a predetermined notion about that. I want to see both of these guys succeed, and if one succeeds more than the other, uh, great. Then, then they've got the post Ben Roethlisberger quarterback on the roster already. That's that's a good thing. Uh, anyways. Haskins, uh, Mason, McFarland, uh, just, yeah. He's involved in the passing game, too. A lot of screens and uh, end rounds and things of that nature. Samuels, um, Jalen Samuels, don't count him out yet because Betty Snell's missing a lot of time. Betty Snell's banged up. They brought in some guy, Pete Guerrero. Guerrero? I think it's just said Guerrero. There's some uh, names flying in and out of here as players get banged up injured and any bodies to practice. So uh, somebody mentioned Pete Guerrero busted off a big run or something. I don't know, today, yesterday, whatever it was. And I'm just kind of like, why are we mentioning Pete Guerrero? He's probably a guy that might not even see a snap against the Eagles on Thursday. Let's not go there. Uh, speaking of which, most of what I'm saying right now, apply this for the Eagles game. That's they did not really prep for a preseason game, but that's what we're going to be looking at here in the coming days. And there's just, uh, you're not going to see a whole lot of the starters, maybe more on uh, defense here on the 12th, seven thirty start and Philadelphia uh, battle of Pennsylvania. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Hayden. Oh yeah. See, now I brought up something else I was going to talk about. Joe Hayden wants to be extended and be a stealer for life. That's great. Joe's 32. We're going to see what kind of money he's asking for. Right. Uh, but anyways, uh, don't count Samuels out. That one handed catch was very impressive. He still has a lot of different versatility. He, uh, he got tripped up in that game. I mean, he's playing against junior varsity. He's a guy who ran for a ton of yards and had a bunch of big plays against the Patriots several years ago. Is he running back two on this roster? Probably not, but I think he's still somebody that might be valuable, versatile role. Remember, Mike Tomlin and company loves versatility. Benny Snell can't go. He's one less dog in the fight. And it'll open up another roster spot. Um Mason going through some reads better. Ingram playing both sides. Najee Harris creates. Najee Harris creates yards that aren't there. 
every single time he catches the football and he's out there without most of the guys penciled in to be starters with the offensive line. I know it's in shorts. I know it's non-contact, but even without the contact and you're trying to grab it, what might be a uh, like a flag football type thing, just make a tag almost at these guys to stop a play. He is elusive and he's quick. His footwork's quick. My goodness, I think he's going to turn some heads and make some people rethink about taking running backs in the first round. He already did before he was even drafted with myself included in that conversation. I had that Haskins um, wasn't as sharp in another series here. Tipped pass, uh, near sack. Those were both Tyson Alu plays with Highsmith and Ingram in there. Alu Alu is feasting. He seems very feisty as well. Uh, Stephon Tuitt was not at practice. He still got Cam Hayward. My goodness. The Steelers front, they're going to be something else. Um, Robert Spillane, let's talk a little bit about the inside linebackers. I uh, didn't get to see Devin Bush just yet, but Spillane. Uh, Spillane, a lot of Vince Williams. Kind of almost like a clone. He stood up Derrick Henry. Some people were like, oh, he's really made a name off of that. Well, he also had a pick six of Lamar Jackson. That's the first that Lamar Jackson's ever thrown in a game. A lot to hang your hat on. Maybe a Cinderella one-year type thing, fill in. But he wasn't out there, and Avery Williamson was. The Steelers started losing games. Didn't end up playing the last like four and a half games to finish the season. So I think Spillane is a guy with some natural instincts that make up maybe for some of his talent. You don't want any of the thumping linebackers. It's not another Devin Bush. You don't want any of these guys really in the pass coverage. And I, I don't know, like they're full assignments out there. We're going to see some different things. He did have a decent play. They tried to clear him all the way down to the sideline. Uh, I believe Ben did on this one particular play that comes to mind. Matched up against, I don't know if it was Najee or McFarlane, but uh, he, bro- he broke up a nice pass as well. I know, I didn't write everything. I had to write it real quick while they're getting other plays, so I don't to always get the numbers down and stuff too. Not that you would want me to fumble around and be like, oh, well, who's wearing 17 out of the wide receiver group? Uh, I'm going to get to that. Uh, Josh Dobbs, one of the big plays he had. Rico Busey? I don't know. They don't give me a pronunciation chart on here. He's wearing AB's old number, 84. And there was a little bit of um, hype about him having a big practice last week or the week before, whenever they started with the public practices. I was on vacation. I'm reading this. I'm like, really? People are saying he looks like AB. He's got 84 on. That's real cute. It's like the mini Troy Polamalu that was walking around the hall and showed up at training camp the one year. Uh, this guy gets open. He does. He, he gets open. He's battling. Uh, so is Matthew Sexton. We saw him with the big return uh, special teams play over in the preseason game, and he's doing a lot of that as well in training camp. He's fielding some of this stuff. Maybe uh, Deontay Johnson – Looking at depth charts, still listed, or no, not listed. He's now backup punt returner. I'm sorry, forget. Shame on me, I forgot. Ray Ray McLeod, um, because Ray Ray hasn't always been out there, nor was Antoine Brooks. I made some comment that he had a wrap on. I think he's just um, maybe banged up or a little sore or something like that. They're, they're, they're babying him. I don't think anything to be concerned of. Uh, he took it off. He had a compression sleeve on as well. So I, I was just kind of disappointed because I wanted to see what he's he's been doing. Uh, it would be nice to see. Uh, in person. Let's see. Um, oh, B- uh, Busey again, toe tap on the sideline. One more. I think two wide receivers get there. There's been rumblings about the expanded practice squad. I didn't mention this earlier. Owners were talking about it. I'm not sure it was 100% approved or not, but I'm under the impression that they're going to use a lot of the same rules as last year, including the abbreviated injured reserve for three weeks. We're expecting a lot of those uh, to be used not only for 2021, but to potentially become permanent changes to the way the NFL rosters are made up. So if they get 16 practice squad players, Josh Dobbs, I think, is there. And just even in the event of injury, you kind of want him. In the event of, we don't know what's going to go on. We saw it with COVID and stuff last year. People end up on the list. We don't know if close contact things. The NFL's changing some of their policies with masks or not and everything else. We're seeing it around the country now, around the world. I'm not here to speak one way or the other or whatever about that. It's just the fact of the matter is this is something that might need to be addressed. And teams were having quarterbacks that weren't even with their team. Josh McCown last year with, uh, I believe, the Houston Texans. He was just a sit-at-home, stay-at-home dad. 
the bat phone sitting there over on the side ready to ring in case a Denver Broncos situation happens and then all of a sudden you don't have a quarterback. I think Josh Dobbs is going to be that guy this year. I think that's why the Steelers essentially brought him back. He also gets in a lot of good work. And he was eligible to be in this spot too. But he puts in a lot of good work on the field with these younger players. He just doesn't get a whole lot of it because they are really invested in looking at what Rudolph and Haskins has, if that makes sense. They got the eggs in that basket. Haskins, the former first-round pick, of course, has that pedigree. Uh, And you got to see what he's got. Is the guy washed? Is he a bust? Or is he somebody that can add some value uh, a tremendous value for you know a futures contract. The, the minimum, this guy's lost a lot of money and uh, basically kind of immaturity. And I think he's over that immaturity right now. He looks very mature. He looks like a leader on the field. Um, I said he has commanded the offense here as a two-minute drill. Even if he is checked down, he was making pretty good read and progressions, getting everybody organized at the line of scrimmage, hurrying up, no huddle, Looked good. Looked exactly as you would expect from a former first-round pick from a very impressive college program. Maybe one of the top five, top three with uh, Ohio State. It's one of my guys I watched and really advocated for. But just keep in mind, he's not Deshaun Watson. He's not Lamar Jackson. He's not a running mobile quarterback. He didn't have a great 40 time. He is a pocket passer. He's just like Ben, just like Mason. Is his footwork maybe a little better? It depends. Getting out of the pocket, yeah, but on the passing, that's been the thing that everybody's been knocking on him as far as uh, the way some of his throws are, some of the uh, accuracy or downfield uh, issues. So uh, just keep that in mind. A lot of people said he came out early. I I think the thing with – don't take me out of context here. I think the thing with Haskins is the problems that he has are problems that are coachable. Mason Rudolph, I think, has a lot of the tools – We're going to see how much of those are coachable. Uh, There's reason why five other quarterbacks went ahead of Mason. It's not backpedaling on Mason. I still think Mason is a competent quarterback, better than a lot of the backups in the league currently. Laugh as you may, there have been worse over the years with the Steelers, some of it masked by awesome defenses with Casey Hampton, who should be in the Hall of Fame. I'm going to start getting that trending. Um, We'll save this for last. It was really fun. I'm going to say Sexton. He's fast and he reads the field well. Uh, If you want a more elaboration on that, the same way he's returning uh, punts. Antonio Brown could see kind of things before they happen. Deontay Johnson, shifty, hard to tackle, moving around. Sexton, man. I think he's going to need a little bit of time. I think he's going to be with the team this year. Maybe get a shot next year if some of these other players end up uh, moving. I, I don't anticipate James Washington being back for another year, not because of the rumors, just because they've got a load of guys. Juju's on a one-year contract too, so the only real guarantees there uh, for for certain on the rookie contract still, Chase Claypool, Deontay Johnson, who will be coming into a contract year. Sexton might have a role. Busey might, or Bussy, I'm sorry, I don't know his, uh, how to pronounce his name, but Uncle Rico here. He's going to have, uh, I, I think, a shot at this too. Isaiah McCoy is a, a larger guy. He's 6'2". Somebody asked how his blocking was. Didn't really get to look at a lot of the blocking. There's just a lot of things going on at once, so I didn't really look at the wide receivers blocking. I was looking more at the tight ends, actually, um, as odd as that may be. And there's only so much you're, you're getting. You're getting some of it done without the pads, I guess. Uh, let me see here. The backup quarterback drills. I wrote this down on here. I think I covered most of what I wanted to say. With that, the wide receiver battle is the only guy I didn't mention as well. Uh, Where's his name at? Anthony Johnson. Come on down. You're the next contestant. He's wearing 83. Isaiah McCoy is wearing 17. Um, So when you're looking for some of these guys on Thursday, Rico, uh, Uncle Rico here, (laughs) wearing the old Antonio Brown, 84. We've got, where's my other guy? Matthew Sexton. How come I'm not seeing Matthew Sexton on my list here? He's not on the depth chart. But that's just... I'm stunned here. I don't know why he's not uh, shown here. Let me see. Sexton's wearing 80. That's right. I shouldn't have forgot that. Uh, But Sexton, like I said, he's 5'11", 175, Eastern Michigan guy. I'm going to find McCoy here, too. McCoy... McCoy is wearing the old 17 to Mike Wallace. Uh, 6'3". I have him listed 6'3". I had him listed 6'2". Earlier, 182. Let's see. Where's my other guys at? Uh, Johnson. We got a couple of them. 
And Buddy Johnson as well. I might as well mention, mention him. There's three Johnsons here on the team. There's probably a Johnson on every team in the NFL, if not two. <laughs> one of the most common names. Looked up one year. I think there was 25 Smiths in the NFL back when Emmett Smith was playing, believe it or not. Buddy Johnson, um, he's got to work on some coverage things too. He does look uh, he does look the part, though. He's still a rookie, so, you know, give him a, cut him a little slack there. Uh, the old Heath Miller number, Anthony Johnson, 83-6-2. Also, I wasn't as impressed with him. Or I wouldn't say I wasn't as impressed with him. Those are the wrong words, but the, the smaller guys kind of stood out. Maybe it was kind of more like the check down or, or the type of routes they were running versus the guys going downfield. Johnson broke one, busted coverage, a really good one, and had another great play later. So he ended up making the latter impression on me. Over the course, uh, over the course of the day, need some water here. Mm. That's some high quality H two O. So I'm looking at uh, some of these guys. Um, uh, B- Bussy Busey Uncle Rico here is also six two from Hawaii. Not something you see very often. Uh, Hawaii. It's like do you have to really twist someone's arm to go to Hawaii for school? as my camera does the little lean lean back thing here. Uh, so this is interesting. I, there's four guys that are going to be fighting for what I feel are two spots on the practice squad, potentially a wide receiver six. But they do get to call some people up with that new rule. As long as you have enough linemen playing, I think it's nine linemen that are rostered, eight linemen rostered, whatever, on game day, you get to expand that 53 up to 55. These are some of the guys that you want to kind of hang your hat on and keep an eye on too during the preseason games. I've got a couple more notes for you. The most fun ones coming yet. Uh, Haskins real command of the offense Dobbs. Um, just, uh, he, he didn't really, and I'm not even sure they allowed him the full time. They, they have so much time that they allot for each of the drills to keep everything just efficient and keep it flowing. And they blow the horn, they blow the whistles and he, I don't recall him finishing, but he wasn't really getting the ball moving. But again, not a Dobbs thing necessarily. He's in there with Pete Guerrero, who was signed like that day. <laughs> so take that for what you will. I'm not trashing him. Not, I, I just, I, in fact, I thought I just gave him a very glowing endorsement, even though it's a practice squad endorsement. That he's still very valuable to the Steelers. Be interesting. A lot of people talk about former players and whether they can be coaches or not. And I, I don't know. I don't know. Is there a role for him there? Quite possibly. The final one, the most fun one, the fun one from the preseason game as well. Percy, or I'm sorry, not Percy. Oh, dear Lord, did I just do that? Presley Harvin, the third. BFP. Somebody said it should be uh, BPP. Uh, big, big fat punter. PHAT. Pretty hot and tempting. Uh, he kicks the ball. And it sounds like a cannon going off. I tweeted it sounded like a warship. I put my head down in my notes for like one second, and I didn't realize the ball was snapped, and you knew he was the one who kicked it, not Jordan Berry. Legitimately. And I know part of the stadium is empty, like the whole one side, the whole upper deck. And you see the ball sail all the way up in the lights. And you've got Sexton fielding these punts, and there was one. I don't know if he could really lose it in the sun. It wasn't like high noon or anything like that. Two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And the the ball, like he had to field it to the ground. The way it just dropped. I, like that wasn't the only one that was impressive. And even when he kind of shanks him in practice, it's still something to see. Because it's not a 20-yard Jordan Berry <laughs> going for par here. I feel bad. I, I've liked Jordan Berry, and I thought Jordan Berry has been one of the, probably the only good punter the Steelers have had since Daniel Sepulveda. And even Sepulveda, you got to go back, and he had some shakiness here or there. And uh, Harvin is just something to watch. And there was like a oh my god moment with the crowd with that particular one, because he saw how much hang time the ball got. The ball is getting distance. You can hear the thing go whap every time he's just laying into it. His thighs, his legs are just enormous. He looks like a Lego block. Uh, one of the little minifigure guys. Uh, to, to call him even fat, I think it's all in his quads and hammies, man. And I was saying if he was like a turkey, 
that's what you would want for the Thanksgiving feast to feed this team. And they might still have some leftovers, but he would get the presidential pardon for being so special. And man, it's I'm telling you, it seems ridiculous the amount of attention we're giving to a punter. I know they're people too. I know we get silly about some of this stuff, but he's really, I feel like he's really the real deal. I'm going to be so excited to see what he ends up doing on game days. They had him doing a lot of holding as well on some of the place kicking drills uh, and uh, just got to get that part of his game down too because that rapport with Chris Boswell is going to be just as important as what he does uh, flipping the field and he will flip the field and he was just booming it. B- Barry had some really nice punts and it reminds me of when Barry came into camp and they already had Brad Wing. I would not be surprised if the Steelers get like a seventh round pick or something uh, set for Jordan Berry. There might be a team that's a little lower in the waiver wire priorities that are looking and might and might want to take them off the Steelers' hands. Uh, the only thing that kind of sends me the other way on that was he was a free agent last year. They bring in Colquitt, and that didn't work out, and he was still available, so nobody took a flyer on him. But as you can see with the Dallas Cowboys and allowing their punter to kick in the Hall of Fame game, you can't have enough specialists on the field. So, folks, long-winded. I'm going to try and stay away from my water bottle for just one last swig here as we put a bow on the show. Uh, There's a lot of things to continue looking forward to. Philadelphia Eagles coming up. Let me give one last glance at the uh, depth chart. I had already mentioned about Kevin Dotson. Let's see what we got going on with some of the offensive line going forward. I still can't believe J.C. Hassenauer is listed as the starting center here with the amount of reps Kendrick Green was taking. I didn't really say enough about Kendrick Green, but yeah. Yes, he looks every bit the part. He looks great. I, 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 I like it. I'm sold on it until otherwise, and we see it in the game, and somebody, one of these guys that I'm really hyping up or talking about. I know everybody I'm talking up, but there's been, there's a lot of positive going on in the camp. The few negative things that I said aren't really even negatives. This is practice. These are things that they can correct. That's what they're there to work on. So I, even when I say something bad about Haskins or Dobbs or Robert Spillane, it's like, eh, just pfft. You know, it's practice. People are tracking stats in practice. Like, get out of here. Get out of town. You don't know if Rudolph was told, hey, hit, try and hit him long, and then it just doesn't work out, or ball gets whapped, Lou uh, Lou reads it, and just all kinds of things. But there's still good, st- a lot of good stuff going on here. Uh, Juju had his shenanigans on the sideline. He gave a young man uh, a football that was wearing his jersey. I mean, after I think he scored the one on Minka, <laughs> that was the one that he gave away into the stands. That was really fun. A nice souvenir for that young man who happened to be wearing the right jersey, and he was in the right place at the right time, a few rows up, uh, sitting in that corner, uh, catty corner from me, actually. And uh, let's see, Derek Watt got involved a little bit too. I'd be you know a little remiss to mention that he was out there. And uh, no kidding. Kalen Bellage did not get to see Kalen Bellage. Who else we got? Um, Henry Mondow out there, Isaiah Bugs. I said Cassius Marsh. Ulysses Gilbert, kind of in the same category as the other inside linebackers I've been talking about. Uh, Trey Norwood, he's turning some heads. Miles Killebrew. Uh, Miles Killebrew and Arthur Mollett. I think Antoine Brooks, he's listed here as the starting nickel, taking over for Mike Hilton. I think the Steelers are going to keep a few extra DBs. These guys are a little bit versatile. I think Mullet's going to make this roster also, and I think Miles Killebrew will as well. We'll trade Nor- Norwood. I got to do some of the ma- the funny math here. We- we've got uh, the four starters for sure with Joe Hayden, who wants to play until he's forty. We'll see if he can do it. Uh, nothing against him. I mean, we've had some guys that have been playing into their thirties. Do you want him as your primary option? Let's see how he plays this year, right? Uh, That's why he wants the contract now. (laughs) Who wouldn't? Let's do it now instead of seeing if I suck this year. Uh, And I love Joe Hayden. Yeah, make him a Steeler for life. Absolutely. Make him Fitzpatrick, Terrell Edmonds, Cam Sutton, who's playing on the outside in the practice that I saw and also in that preseason game the other night. We'll probably see some more of this just to get their feet wet maybe against the Eagles. But there's four. Usually they keep 10. If you put Brooks and Mallett there, uh, Justin Lane, uh, let me see, that's uh, seven. And, or let me see, wait a minute. I said four, Brooks is five, Mallett is six, Lane is seven, 
You could have Norwood, Killebrew, and James Pierre. Yeah, everybody can make this. That's 10 right there. I think that'll work. I don't think they have as uh, many spots here uh, open with the uh, – maybe with the linebackers. Yuli's probably going to end up making it. Buddy Johnson will as well. Marcus Allen didn't see as much with him, uh, to be completely honest. So – didn't pay as much attention to 27 when he was out there. But I saw Killebrew a lot, and he's been playing safety. I know he was playing linebacker with the Lions last. But don't forget Terrell Austin, who's the uh, secondary coach here in Pittsburgh now, was the guy up there in Detroit. And Killebrew played under him as a safety. So he's coming back with somebody that he knows, who knows him well, and is probably putting him in the best position to succeed. I think he might be the primary backup at safety. Trey Norwood's been making some plays, making some buzz as well. I didn't see any faults in James Pierre's game, uh, really. I know he got. I said he got picked on a little bit in the preseason game with vanilla defense, but I thought uh, for whatever I got to see, he did well. Mallette looks like a guy who's battling for a spot, too. So this is going to be interesting to see. Maybe 10 DBs. Maybe not 10 linebackers this time around. Uh, certainly there's only four on the outside, I think, uh, that – or maybe five. Quincy Roach might be in there as well as a fifth. So maybe they do. I'm going to have to figure this out. That's going to be an upcoming show. We're going to do the hot takes on who makes the roster, who's on the hot seat, who um, who might be on the way out. I'm going to figure that out. The only one that I've got so far, man, the only one that's really clinging on to, his jo- to the job that he had, still listed here as the one, as the punter, Jordan Berry. Folks, thanks for joining me once again. I'm getting a nervous twitch. So I had to get that little swig of water and tell you to like, comment, subscribe, the two percenters that listen to me ramble and on. Maybe we got up to four percenters. Thank you. Thank you for putting up with my handwritten notes that I had to put up with as well. Hope you enjoyed the Hall of Fame. Hope you're enjoying all of the Steelers football. They got a jump on everyone uh, for the season. And I heard someone drop the comment and say Steelers are the only undefeated team in the NFL, of which I was like, man, what just a preposterous thing to say. So, of course, I said it to a Cowboys fan. That's my neighbor. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Twist the knife a little bit. Twist the knife. So that'll do it for me. My name's Joe Kuzma. Thank you for supporting Steel City Underground. And until next time, as always, we encourage everyone out there to be safe, be good, and we'll catch you later. We would like to thank you for listening and remind our listeners to follow us on social media and our website, www.steelcityunderground.com. 